Slimehouse TV, myself, The Orkane, hold tight the Slime Alliance, the Slime Renegades, and everybody else that's locked in for some toy talk. We just got back from the Doncaster Racecourse Toy Fair. This is a toy fair that I've been going to since I was a little kid. It quite often turns up some real good gear, and today was no exception, so I can't wait to show you what we picked up. Let's do this! So the Doncaster Racecourse Toy Fair is the closest one to me in Sheffield and it's one that I've been going to since I was a little kid. My dad used to stand here selling Action Man and Steve Austin and that kind of thing and I used to go with him so I've got lots of fun memories of buying toys at this particular toy fair and although I've not been to it for a few years it's one that can turn up some unexpected gold. It's nowhere near as big as the NEC but it can still turn up that good stuff and this time was no exception. Because it's early bird, like people are still setting up, so this is the time where you can like snap a bargain, like before the general public have come in. We get like first pickings, that's why we pay to come in earlier. So like I do with most of these toy fairs, I like to get there for the early bird opening. You can get there for 8am, so while all the stall holders are setting up, you can have a nip round and get in before the general public, before the building gets swamped, and hopefully snatch a couple of bargains. It's the street sharks. Oh, we've got a box of playmates. Thundercats for a fiver. Got Ghostbusters here. With NEC as well, it's a bit overwhelming because there's so many stalls. Now, when it's like a bit of a small affair, you can like I feel you can have a better look for stuff. So like I said, this isn't nowhere near as big as the NEC Toy Fair, it's about half the size, but that's not always a bad thing, because when you get to the NEC, sometimes it's so big and so busy and so hectic that it gets a bit overwhelming, and a lot of the stalls, you only get to have a quick browse before you have to move to the next one, because it is that gigantic. But when you get to these smaller fairs, you really can scrutinise each table individually. You can have a look in all those little boxes, all those little bits, boxes and trays that you don't normally get a chance to have a good rummage through. You can really spend your time and have a proper look at each stall when you get to a smaller fair like this so in many ways I sometimes prefer it. It's cool to be able to look in all those little accessory boxes and things and pick up something that you might have missed if you saw this at a bigger fair because you just didn't have time to look in all those little boxes. Good day out at Toy Fair innit Judd? Nice distraction. Oh we've not done this aisle brother. What have we got on here? Look at these. It's only a five of that look. That'd be nice for Wendy and the Wendigo, wouldn't it? Get that for them man that like feet. <laughs> I got such fun memories of my dad having to glue that gun back together on top of the Falcon. Attack it this way. Boom, 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 boom. So at this point, we're just doing that first initial walk round, that quick loop that you do when you first get there, when you're doing the early bird thing before the general public come in. And this can be a bit of a catch-22 because you're running round quick so that you can get through all the stalls, but you can miss stuff. One thing that I didn't miss though was something that I saw on pretty much the first row when I entered the main hall and it was the Ninja Turtles sewer submarine. Now this is one that's never been on my list of things that I'm after but when I saw it I really liked the look of it. I really like aquatic submarine vehicles with all pipes and shit attached to them. I like the clear lens at the front and when I saw it it really did speak to me so I picked it up and I had a good look at it and I thought you know what that's something that could come home with me today. The price was £28 which was a good price on its own. These things sell for a lot more on eBay and things and it was all there complete the only thing that it was missing was a little flag that fits on the periscope but it's practically a sticker so you can't really grumble that it's not got its little sticker on the periscope there if you know me you know that when it comes to my loose action figures and vehicles I like them with all the parts I like them complete with all their pieces and I saw this thing there with all of its pipes and I love like aquatic sewer submarine shit when they've got all pipes and attachments and things it really did jump out to me so I saw it it had a great price on it and I'm thinking yeah do you know what that's definitely something that could come home with me today 
He also had a bubble bomber on his stall, which is like a Ninja Turtles F-14 jet fighter plane. It's one that you don't see very often, and when you do see it around, it's often got a lot of its pieces missing, but this one was again complete. He wanted £40 for the bubble bomber, so I'm thinking, you know what, that's also a potential. That could also come home with me today. Also, the Bubble Bomber and the Sewer Sub are both from the same range of Ninja Turtles vehicles, from the Mutant Military range. So, having the chance to buy both of them at the same time is a nice opportunity as well. Now, something else that this guy had on his stall, which I didn't manage to film because I was caught up in a moment of toy buying and thinking what I wanted to take home with me and putting a deal together and stuff like that, is he had a Sergeant Bananas figure from Ninja Turtles Playmates. Now, this is a figure that I've been waiting for for a while because I picked up his belt and his gun from Toy Scavenger at the first NEC that I filmed for this channel. So, I've been waiting for a nice loose figure and this guy had it loose with not only the gun and the belt but also his minifigure as well and he only wanted £30 for it. So, I'm thinking, Do you know what? There's a lot of potential on this stall right here there's a few things that I could be bringing home with me today. So this is a figure that I've been waiting to pick up loose so that I could put those bits with him. But he's got one here with both his gun, his belt and his little minifigure as well. And he wants 30 quid for that. So I'm thinking, Do you know what? There's a lot of potential just on this first stall here. Also, while I'm looking at this thing, there's a guy lingering over my shoulder. He's like looking at me, waiting for me to put it down so that he can swoop in on the deal. Now, when you get to toy fairs and car boats and that kind of thing, there's an unwritten rule where, like, if you've picked something up from a stall and you've got it there in your hand, then you've got first dibs on that. Not until you put it down can someone else move in on that deal. It's like an unwritten rule. It would be bad manners, bad decorum, and pretty much a dick move if you said to the stall holder, like, how much do you want for that that's in that guy's hand? I'll buy it now. Like, while ever it's in my hand, I get first dibs on buying it. But this guy's lingering over my shoulder and I know that as soon as I put it down, he's going to try and swoop in on the deal. So it kind of puts the pressure on me of me having to make a decision right now if I want to buy them or not. So I think, do you know what? The Bubble Bomber is cool, but it doesn't speak to me like the Sewer Sub does. It's almost like a gun and I never like vehicles when they're like a vehicle, but then also like a gimmicky sword or a gun or something like that. I like my vehicles to be vehicles. So as much as I thought the Bubble Bomber was cool and it was a nice price at 40 quid, I decided to leave that and I went with the Sergeant Banana and the Sewer Sub. Would you, uh, would you do 50 on them two? You got 28 on that. Yeah, you do 50, yeah? yeah? Sound, I'll take that. So altogether, this is supposed to come to £58, but I asked the guy, would you do 50 for both of these things? And he said, yeah, I'm happy with that. So straight away, got a nice deal. Haggled him down a little bit, got £8 off the deal and walked away with a nice, sweet first purchase. Doncaster Toy Fair turning up that gold straight away, buzzing. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, dude. Uh, yeah, I'll tuck him in a bag, thank you. Sweet deal, mate. Thank you very much. You have a good day. Now, the more I think about it, part of me still thinks that I should have got the Bubble Bomber as well. But it was a lot of money to spend on a first stall when you've not really had a look around a toy fair yet. And also, I only like to pick things up that speak to me. I'm thinking, am I picking that up because I want to document it on the channel? Or because I want it for my own collection? Or because it's a good deal? Fucking hell. There were a guy hanging around me for ages while I was about to make that deal. Like, if I didn't make it, then he was going to swoop straight in. So, kind of put the pressure on me to, to buy him. In that particular situation, I think the Bubble Bomber is something that I think it's cool. It's not something I had as a kid, so I've got no nostalgic attachment to it or anything like that. I like the sculpt, but it doesn't have like no Toxic Crusaders, real mutant playmate style sculpt to it. It pretty much is just a jet that's a gun. So if I pick one up cheaper in the future, then I'd like to document it on the channel. But thinking back, I'm glad that I didn't take that as well. It's nice to leave that for someone else, for that guy that was fucking lingering over my shoulder. Let him take that one. <laughs> but I got both of them for a nice deal. I, he gave me them both for 50, and one were 28 and one were 30, so I got an eight quid discount nice good start to the day now if i'd have just brought those couple of bits home i would have left super happy but luckily for me these was off the first row of the stalls in the main hall so there was still a bunch more toy fair to explore yet that's meant that long time long time no see <laughs> you brought some playmates let's have a look what you got it was also nice to see my friend Neil from Retrograde. I'd been with him a couple of days earlier at the NEC, and this is a guy that's been standing at Doncaster Toy Fair since I was a little kid. He's like a staple of the Doncaster Racecourse Toy Fair. He always has real nice bits on his stall. At that first NEC video that I filmed, he had a case fresh box of A-Team figures that I filmed. He had a case fresh box of Ninja Turtles at the last NEC, and he's always got fire on his stall. I've bought some real nice pieces off him over the years, so I'm always excited to see what he's got spread out on his stall when I see him at a toy fair. He's a bit like Beachhead from G.I. Joe, like a bootleg yeah, version. Yeah, one's one's uh, Beachhead, I can't remember what the other two. So they're like quite early, some gold ones, so I think they're about 8, 4, 26. They're nice, them do.
that McDonald's Barbie, that's very good. Do you know what I mean? It's like a realistic Barbie. Like, you're probably not going to grow up and be a ballerina or own a mansion, but you might work in McDonald's. Look <laughs> at this custom Darth Vader, that's a bit of you, that steampunk style. Love it. Did you make it? My husband did it. Did he? Yeah. Tinkering away. Beautiful, that. <laughs> Grey Worm, the Hound, oh, yeah. Brianna Toth, they got them all. Varys. Marjorie, we like Marjorie. Hodor. <laughs> got some nice Beast Wars, I always like this one. Oh, we've got some right Godzillas, look. Someone's got a Japanese hookup. <laughs> it was also nice to see some genuine Japanese stuff at a UK toy fair, something that you don't see very often. I got chatting to this guy because he had some real nice Godzilla and Gamera pieces on his stall and it turns out he's actually got a shop that's full of this stuff. This Gamera set's wicked. Oh, there he is, my guy, Jet Jaguar. The greatest giant robot of all time. You haven't got a big one of them, have you? A full size. Did you? What, in England? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What, did you let that go for if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'd have snatched that up if I saw that here. Yeah. I wouldn't care it if its face were broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love one. I also saw that it had the little Shogun Godzilla reaction figure, like the Repro one, and I said, you've not got a full size one of these, have you? Turns out that he'd sold one three weeks ago, and I was absolutely gutted, because that's a toy that's been on my Holy Grail list for fucking years. Still never got a Shogun Godzilla, and I've been all over the world looking for one, yeah, yeah. I've been after one for like 15 years before anyone else even wanted one, and still not got one, and... Where, where did you sell that, online or at a show? Uh, my shop. This is a toy that's really popular now. A lot of people want to add it to their collection, but I've been trying to get one of these for like 20 years. So when I heard that he sold one like three weeks ago for 275 quid or something, I was wounded because I would have snatched his hand off at that price. Do you have any like Maroos on or Bullmarks or any of that like vintage vinyl stuff? That's what I'm right into, that, that, that vintage stuff full bit. I don't even mind if they reissues. They reissued them all at 90s with different paint jobs, but they're still right nice. I wounded that guy last week sold a Shogun Godzilla, like one of my holy grail pieces that I'm so after. I've been after it for years before anyone else wanted one. He just sold one for 275 a couple of weeks ago and I snatched that up if I saw it. Gotta keep hunting. Gotta, gotta keep on the hunt on the prowl. We'll get one one day. But it's just one of them that, do you know what? I didn't get it this time. I'll get one in the future. And it's just nice to know that one is out in the UK floating around and eventually could end up back in my collection. Who knows, one day. Tommy Gun, that come out as like a rival to Action Man, but then only like brought out a few outfits and then it just like went by the wayside, but they've got such nice outfits. The little grenades, the pins come out of them and everything. I've got one that I want to show on the channel at some point. Original Megatron pistol. That's, an, that's a beast. I love that Muhammad Ali, 135 quid, not even a bad price. Definitely one I'd like to add to my collection at some point. Denny's Fisher, Muhammad Ali. Absolute beaut. Uh, this this aisle, bro. Look at this guy with uh, fireman's helmet on. My G. Look at that. Ooh. Nice, sexy one. Cynthia. Looks like some like Rob Liefeld artwork back when they were doing image comics and they drew everything like that. I love that style. I don't collect new stuff. I want that old, weird shit that you don't see. <laughs> yeah, I want that band shit. I want them toys that people's had to smuggle into the country. That's a bit of me, that Robocop. Look at that animated series Robocop. That's wicked. Alpha Commando. Look at these guns here. Guns, guns, guns. Oh, I love this robot. They have such a good charm to them, these old tin toys. Little tin plate robots and stuff. I love it. Look at firemen there, climbing firemen. This is where it all started, Judge. You don't get to action figures before you get to this stuff. This is my mate's stall. All he does is Jurassic Park and dinosaurs. You're right, dude. How you doing, mate? 
Did good you to see you. Stuff the other day? Yeah, yeah, it was decent. We had a decent day, man. I got yeah. some nice pieces. How was it for you? It was cracking. Yeah, it was a good day, mate. You never know if it's going to be busy here straight after oh, Christmas, but look at that pre hysteria. <laughs> Full moon classic. It's got the kid from Last Action Hero, like weird little puppet dinosaurs. Yeah, look, I, oh, I love it. I'm as much into my weird films as I am You're my weird toys. Yeah, of course. Just a weirdo, really. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, that, mate. Where you need it, mate. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, I got that. It was the best toy ever. I loved it. Even when I was like a bit too old for playing with like Jurassic Park toys, and I just loved that guy on dirt bike. They're interesting. I've not seen them before. She's cute. I'd put her against anyone in Game of Thrones oh, universe, little Aria. She's a fucking ninja. Horrible figure. From Inspector Gadget movie. Oh, yeah. That's fucking horrendous. I love it. Is that <laughs> you don't mind me getting a few shots of your stole your pal? I've got a few more, I'm just gonna get out. You got the Jin Wishmaster. Yeah. The crow. Ghost face. Some classics. Something you don't see every day. This particular Egon with his tie unsnapped. Absolute bargain. If I needed one, I'd snatch that up. Zig and zag. That's mint. That's very good. As is the same with a lot of these toy fairs, you get people that specifically specialise in particular brands and specific lines. Some people do Star Wars, some people do Transformers. I like to check out the guys that do Vintage Pallet Toy Action Man. So if you've been watching any of my recent video essays or my toy hunting videos, you'll know that at the minute I'm on a vintage OG Action Man kick and I love to rummage through these stalls because there's lots of pieces that I need to complete figures in my collections that I want to document in videos but I need certain parts for them. And one line of figures that I'm really trying to complete at the minute are my Action Man and Space Rangers. Now I've got pretty much all of them, there's just a couple of little pieces I need. Specifically for the Space Commando, I need his gloves, his boots and the little hose that connects his back to his gun on his gauntlet. They're some pieces that I don't have so when I go to these toy fairs I'm always having a rummage trying to find those pieces that I need to complete the figures in my collection. There's two guys that always stand at the NEC and they've always got such a nice spread of vintage Action Man pieces and other related toys, Steve Austin and that kind of thing. But I had a good rummage through their stall a couple of days ago at the NEC. But even even though I'd done that, it's still nice to see them set up again because every time someone sets up their stall, it looks a little bit different and there's things that you might have missed the first time that you're now seeing. Then there was another guy whose stall I've not had a chance to look at before because he wasn't at the NEC and he again specialised in Palatoy Action Man, had some real nice stuff, some old boxes, all presented really nice and clear, buzzing to have a look for his stall, seeing if there's anything that I need off his stall to complete my collection. My guy Gorgon, I love him, one of my favourite toys ever, even though I've got one it still gets me gassed to see it, I just love seeing him out, about, out and about, <laughs> out in the wild, doing his thing, but he got some nice Tommy gun. Ooh, that's really hard to find, that Captain Scarlet with his visor intact. I've got one, but the visor's broken off. But getting him out with his, uh, his visor intact, don't see that very often. Hence why he's 350 quid. Is it your stall, this pal? So I'm having a look what he's brought with him and like I said everything's presented real nice, real clean, all bagged up with their prices on and all really easy to look through and I said to the guy straight away, one of the guys on the stall, listen I'm looking for an Action Man Space Commando hose pipe, the pipe that connects his gun to his back, have you got one of them? I'm after a hose for my Space Commando, he might not have one, no one ever has but it's always worth asking. He's got some special mission stuff so he might. Next minute he's rummaging through a box behind a stall and he says, do you know what? I might have got what you're looking for. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Let me look. I don't, I don't think it's a good one. No, I, I think it is. Now bear in mind, I've been trying to get one of these for months. I know that it's a rare part. It's one that people pay a little bit more money for because it's like the final piece that people need to complete that figure. It's literally just a fucking pipe, but I need one. So when this guy says that he might have got what I'm looking for, I'm starting to get excited. No, I, I don't know. No, I don't think. It's very similar though. Yeah. Oh, nearly. Yeah. We, <laughs> we nearly got an action man hose. Get me a box of old clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, here, pal. And I'm just thinking, oh shit, because I really thought that he'd found the piece that I needed in that bits box, but when I got it up close, it was quite clearly not the right thing that I'm after. Close, but no cigar. Yeah, it's uh, very, I, I thought it were then. <laughs> nearly. 
like I said though, this guy and his friend that was running this stall had everything presented real nice and he had some real good pieces. So I'm having a look through his boxes to see if there's anything else I need to complete any of the other figures in the collection. Action Man Crash Crew, that's lovely. Oh, he's got Zarg on that though, what's, what's he got on that? That's nice, I'll see what he's got on that there. And what I found while I was looking through these boxes was an Action Man Zargonite uniform. The full uniform. He had the helmet, the gloves, the gun, the bandolier, the vest, the boots. All of it, all in a bag for 60 quid. Now this is a figure that I've spent months gathering all these little bits individually. Asking old contacts of my dad's that collected Action Man. Gunner Toy Fairs, looking on eBay and stuff like that. And I eventually did recently put one together. But now I'm seeing it all again in a bag in front of me. All there, right there, complete. And what I want to do eventually is a big action man display with all these figures looking real nice. And the Zargonite is like the foot soldier, the stormtrooper of the bad guy, Captain Zargon. So part of me did want to get two of them so I could have Captain Zargon displayed there with one of these either side of him. So now seeing that in that bag complete gives me the opportunity to do that. But a nice rummage through this stall anyway. That's not easy to get, we are it all broken. So I said to the guy that I was interested in buying the Zorganite uniform and he got it all out and unfortunately one of the little pieces on it was broken. So he says, you know what, because that's broken, I'll knock you 20 quid off. I'll do the entire suit for 40. Now there's one of these currently on eBay ending in two days that's over £60 bidding so far. So instantly I know that this is a very good deal. 40? Yeah, I'll do 40 on that if that's one that's yeah. broken. Nice one. I know that it's got his little belt broken on its bandolier, but that's not the end of the world. I will be able to find another one of those. So instantly I'm like, yes, yeah, sweet deal. I take that. Tom Stonebox is beautiful. I wouldn't mind an horse as well. An action man horse at some point, you know, for cowboy. Display a cowboy and Indian on it, it looked right nice. What I then do is then I go over to the other Action Man guy who's got loads of different pieces and I say, look, I'm looking for a full bandolier for an Action Man Zorganite. Have you got one? And he pulled one out of a box for me there in front of me. Not only that, he then pulled out some gloves that I needed for my Space Commando. So I walked away from his stall with a bandolier to complete the Zorganite uniform and some gloves for my Space Commando. And to me, this was just a prime example of why there's no better place to vintage toy hunt than a toy fair. Because you can sit on eBay and try and find all these little individual pieces and pay a real high price for them and then pay postage and then wait for them to arrive and put it together that way or you can be at a toy fair where you can find this stuff instantly in front of you you might not find it but when you do find it that thrill of the hunt there's no finer feeling as a toy collector like sat clicking on ebay is cool you do find the stuff that you need but you pay a higher price for it and in many ways it just feels soulless clicking away i like to be at the toy fair rummaging through these boxes asking the guys to save me stuff have you got this bring it to the next one i want to piece this figure together with this one and i just love that i love that thrill of the hunt i love being able to complete a figure there and then. What was also really cool is this was my friend Judd's first ever toy fair. He'd never been to one before. This guy Judd has followed me into hell making two movies with me. He films a bunch of my Slime House episodes whenever we do this out and about stuff. And it was really cool to be able to bring him to a toy fair and he had such a good time there. He managed to pick up a couple of bits that he needed for his figures because he likes to make custom action figures. So he's out looking for broken loose figures and parts like that to make his own little custom figures in his own way. He was able to find a lot of cool little loose pieces very cheap and come on with quite a lot of stuff that he can use for future projects so bringing someone to the toy fair for the first time and them having such a good experience made me feel awesome these toy fairs also have a lot of people selling trains and model railway stuff specializing in that kind of thing on their stalls and these are really good to look around because i like to do my video essay episodes and build little sets for my toys and when i film them create like areas and dioramas around them to help display the figures better 
Currently, I'm putting together a video essay documentary on the entire range of the original Toy Biz Resident Evil figures, and I'm building a whole city diorama around them, so I've been picking up little bits and bats from all over the place to make that diorama better. So looking through all these stores and being able to pick up little pieces that I needed to complete that diorama was awesome, and I couldn't believe how cheap the materials were. Compared to the model shops and hobby craft and boys and Amazon and stuff, these prices were so much cheaper, so I brought home a backpack full of that stuff as well. So all in all, a real good fun day at the Toy Fair, picked up some nice pieces for my collection, picked up some nice materials for future projects, and also made a lot of cool contacts, which to me are just as valuable as the toys that we found. Getting to this place was an absolute nightmare as well, because there was a problem with... Getting to this place was an absolute nightmare as well because there was a problem with transport in the morning. It took me like two and a half hours to get there, pissing about with buses and replacement buses and trains and all that kind of thing. So when I got there, I was thinking, I hope there's some real good stuff at this toy fair to make this journey worth it. And it really was. So what do you think of the pickups that I got from the Doncaster Toy Fair? Do you think I got some nice deals? Do you think I picked up some nice pieces? Let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if there's anything that you saw in any of those shots that you would have not been able to go home without picking up. Also if there's any toy fairs that you want to see me at in the future that you think would be a good place for me to go film and hunt, let me know. There's lots of toy fairs that I've not been to in England so if there's any that you think I need to check out then again let me know in the comments below as well. If this is your first time checking out Slimehouse TV, this is Slimehouse TV. I'm Theo Kane and we do toy videos every single week on this channel. I cover lots of other retro stuff as well but on Tuesdays specifically they're always reserved for toys and we've also got a real good toy collecting community on this channel. So if this is your first time here please introduce yourself down below. Let me know who you are where you're from and what you collect because we've got a great community here and you're more than welcome here at slime house if you want to help support this channel even more you can head over to patreon at patreon.com forward slash slime house tv become a slime alliance member or a member of the slime renegades help me make this channel bigger and better than ever and don't forget to go back and binge the back catalog because if you enjoyed this video today chances are there's a bunch of other stuff on this channel that you're going to enjoy as well so in the meantime i'll catch you in the next video i'm theo kane and until then i'm gone Bow.